let me preface this episode by saying Loot Troop is uh, a YouTube channel that I have recently discovered probably within the last two months. And uh, they make fantastic content. And they posted something on uh, Twitter that really struck a nerve with me. And this is kind of my, uh, not in a bad way, but like uh, something I felt for a very long time. And I just wanted to talk about it. And it says here, we work our butts off every day to create new slash good content, but it means nothing if no one watches or supports us. So uh, sit back and enjoy the ride. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the episode where I'm going to talk about um, a couple things that have really been bothering me. I just prefaced the episode, as you saw. And uh, so Loot Troop, I really enjoy their content. And uh, they've been posting some stuff for a while now. And when they posted that status on Twitter, or that or tweeted that, whatever, uh, I was like, yeah, I um, I really do agree with that. And, you know, it. Where I, where I, there's so many different angles I want to take on this, but I don't really want to, like, come across this in, it like, a condescending way. So, basically, um, you know, after we won the... Uh, the Grumps um, challenge of Mario Maker, you know, we we had like 300 subs come in approximately, which was fantastic, and we had views going all over our videos, and then after about a month, everyone stopped watching it, and we went back down to our, about our, our old school viewing numbers, which is like 10 to 20 views a video, and you know, and like, I would like at least 10% of our fan base to be watching it, and I'd like to think that we work really hard on it, and but I think that what what's happened lately is that people are starting to get this mentality of they're more concerned with the numbers of YouTube rather than putting out the content that brings in the fans and the viewers and the comms and all that. People are more concerned about getting their subscriber number up and that'll motivate them to make more videos and more likes and more comments things like that will give them the drive to really do it rather than the other way around that it's supposed to be, which is you put out the good content, which will then generate though. I need some trees uh, that will then generate more people to come back. And you really have to make things that are enticing and you don't need the best equipment to do that. Now, granted, I've sunk a couple grand into this channel, just trying to make it as good as it can be really. And you know, with we have high tech audio, we have high tech video capture cards. I'm using Adobe Premiere and all that, but you don't need all of that as long as your quality is good. Your excuse me, your quality of content is good rather, and people will forgive that if they know that you're still working hard to make sure that your videos are quality. You don't have to have a four thousand dollar mic. Now, that's not what I don't. I'm not saying I have a four thousand dollar mic. I'm just saying that as an example, and I feel like people are. Like, for example, the whole sub for sub thing, people are going to other YouTube channels like, hey, I checked out your channel. I'd appreciate it if you checked out mine. And it's like, it's, it's not how it works. Like, you can go there, but like, you have to build a community and an actual friendship with people rather than actually trying to go there and just get a, the benefit out of it. It, it. What I mean by that is, you you know, don't just go there for the number and then expect them to keep watching your videos and, um, I don't know, stick around more or less if, uh, if you're not putting out good quality content. What the hell just happened? I don't know why that did that. Oh, my, sorry, my, my updater for MSI just happened. Oh, it's going to do it again, too, because I hit X instead of not now. Whatever. And, um, it's frustrating because there are thousands upon thousands of YouTubers who put out fantastic quality, fantastic content. And granted, the likes and subs likes and comments, I won't say subscri subscriptions because that's our, a direct correlation of feedback, but the likes and subscription or uh, likes and comments directly uh, show you what how well you're doing with it, but you can't force people to comment on on your videos. You can't force people to like them and um should, how, how should I say this? You know, people will comment on it if they if they enjoy it. You, they won't have, and I've said this from the beginning, you can check out our thank you video that I said, like, no one likes to be told what to do. 
And it really comes down to um, people will already make the decision whether or not they want to comment. If they find something relatable, they found something enjoyable, something along the lines of, of that. And this is the shittiest spawn map I have ever gotten. Oh, boy. And uh, we're not going down there. And, you know, it's... I feel like people are starting to get this like, well, I'm not going to view other people if they don't view me. And it's like, that's, that's not how it works. And you know, a lot of people will shame you for self promotion and that's not a healthy way to go about it either, but there should definitely be a way that we can, uh, speak to each, like we, sh I feel like, uh, oh, this is one thing I was also thinking about that. Like when you click on a video, not every video is going to be fantastic. And for, for, I uh, take our channel, for example, you know, not every video is hysterical and I fully acknowledge that and that's okay. And like, I feel like a lot of big YouTubers have really set an unrealistic precedence for smaller YouTubers like the Grumps, Markiplier, PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye, uh, Dashy Games, you know, they all, they already have a huge fan base. So when you have people from that fan base going to other uh, channels, they are expecting a certain level of quality from content and not everybody can get there and like from their first video. And the problem is, is that just because the, that one video watched may, might not have been like tickled your funny bone, you know, doesn't mean that tomorrow's video wouldn't be the one that is one that just made you laugh for 30 seconds straight. And, um, that's something that I have to work on too. Even with my channel, I, I fully acknowledge that like, I don't make the best jokes of every every video and that's that's perfectly fine like this isn't going to be a joke oriented video it's going to be more of just like a releasing my thoughts sort of thing and you know it it um it comes down to for me sp uh, specifically comes down to i have i understand i have to be more attentive to what like rob is saying i noticed that like uh, the meatballs to go episode that we just uploaded in resident evil four, you know, um, I, when I was editing that, I was laughing. Like I didn't, I totally missed the joke when I was, uh, actually recording the episode because, you know, I was trying to fix the sensor bar, but when I was watching it back and recording, I was laughing for like 30 seconds straight. He lit, I couldn't breathe. I was laughing so hard and I was disappointed in myself that I didn't play off that because I missed that joke altogether because I was so focused on making sure that people were happy with like, oh, make sure, I got to make sure that everything looks great and everything sounds great. And I'm so focused on the technical aspect of it and not just relaxing and having fun and just enjoying myself while I'm doing it. And I think that's what a lot of YouTubers also come to struggle with is that like there, it, a lot of it feels really forced sometimes that like you might be doing a video and like you can tell when someone is not fully confident in themselves and that's okay because even the big YouTubers didn't start off fully confident. You can look at like one of my favorites, Marquez Brownlee, look at his first tech video and his also goes by MKBHD versus his videos. Now they are astounding. They are such good quality and it's amazing to see how far he's come over the years. Meanwhile, you know, we're, we're still growing as a channel, which is perfectly fine. And, um, <sighs> here it's it's just really upsetting when you see all of these youtube channels being uh like pushed to the side or they're not getting the recognition that they deserve like loot troop they're fantastic uh karibu kai play another one of our friends uh cocktails and consoles melissa she does fantastic quality she does all these awesome food videos and everything oh my god there it is i knew it was gonna happen again never remind me piss off i don't want to deal with it anymore thank you it'll remind me as soon as i restart my computer anyway so it's fine but um you know, and all these channels like slow to grow, but if they were to ever make that one viral video, they would take off and you know, they need that. And because they deserve it, they work their asses off to get there. And that's not to say that we don't, you know, I, I think I work relatively hard, but that's not the point. The point is that other YouTubers are just being overlooked and you know, they're not, I don't know. It's just, it's really frustrating to see certain YouTubers that don't get the recognition they deserve. And to kind of follow up with that tweet, it's like, yeah, none of it literally means nothing if nobody watches it, but also we need that feedback and support, like a comment or a, a like, or just something that tells us that we did it right. Because the fact that our channel is not even getting 10% of views in the first day 
I like 40 views. I don't think is an unrealistic expectation for having 448 subscribers. I don't think that's too out of the realm of possibility. And so I want to know like what specifically we're doing wrong or that changed from when the Grumps video first debuted or the, you know, when they all came over, because I uploaded that thank you video to everybody that came over and gave me all the positive feedback. And there was, everyone was super nice. And everyone in the Lovelies fan base is super nice for the most part, you know? And um, I was super appreciative of that. But then as soon as we started going back to our gameplay footage, all of a sudden, all the, f the views just plummeted. It went from like maybe 50 views for the first two videos to absolutely nothing for the next couple days. And, it, like, and by nothing, I mean like 10 to 15 views again. And I don't know what we were doing wrong if it was just that our content wasn't funny enough. But like, I, th I feel like uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was that you know, when the Grumps put out a video, they're they're hysterical. That's that's obvious. They they're um, they're charismatic. They're they're genuine people. You know, you can tell that they're not forced. Just like any of the guys that are doing it, like PewDiePie and Jacksepticeye and all those guys, they all make fantastic videos. And you know, it um, but not every video is funny. And I think that's important to note for a lot of YouTubers is that. Not every video that somebody puts out is going to be funny. Sometimes they might just have a deep conversation, like the videos that Ken and I do. We're, we're much more intricate thinkers. We think about things on a much deeper level than, not to say that Rob and I don't, but Rob and I are just complete dumbasses, you know? We just like to ha be stupid and have fun. And that's blatantly apparent when we are recording and when we're doing videos. And I feel like... Um, when people come from another fan base, like I said earlier, it's setting an unrealistic expectation to what uh what they're looking for because like you know they'll come over from the grumps per, for example and they'll expect like the level of jokes that dan and aaron are delivering right off the bat and it's like i don't have that kind of experience you know it's like aaron's been working on his comedy routine in general Get the hell out of here with that nonsense bitch fuck out of here for for years he's been working on his comedy in general for years and that's perfectly fine, you know? And he has now um, pretty much perfected it, and it works well with Dan because Dan laughs at everything, which is awesome. And I think Rob is more so the Dan of our channel. Rob laughs at all of my jokes, which or mo the majority of them, I'd say, which makes me feel pretty good and that I'm at least delivering them better than when I first started. If you go back and listen to our Wind Waker stuff, oh, God, it was terrible. When Rich and I... I was, I, you could hear it in my voice. I just wanted, what the heck, where? Where the fuck? Where the fucking worthless little zombie. I hate the 1.9 update. This is garbage. Oh, I need to eat some meat. I'm going to die. Good. Thank you. Okay. And, you know, you could tell that I was nervous and that I wanted the acceptance and that I wanted people to come in and view our videos and that they thought it was going to be funny. But, you know, I, oh, a fucking skeleton. You mother trucker. You know, and... I, I was just so concerned about people liking us rather than anything else. And now I'm more so focused on, I still am focused on people liking us and enjoying our content, which is always a good, it's, it's important to, in, to focus on that. But at the same time, it's also very important to understand, to just relax and be yourself and have fun because people will, will know when you're trying to force it or when, you know, and I guess what I'm trying to say out of everything I've said in this video is that I think people, you know, if you can see that a YouTuber has put a lot of effort into their channel, they've created a logo, they've, they, you know, they're buying microphones that sound better than just like recording through a crappy ass flip phone. It's an extreme example, but you know, versus like, you know, a garbage USB mic, that's $10. That's all they could afford versus, you know, they finally saved up and they got the blue Yeti, which isn't the best microphone in the world, but it's definitely a high enough quality that big YouTubers like Boogie2988 is still using that. He's got almost 4 million, and oh god, I'm so going to die. Oh, that's going to kill me. Yep. Damn it. You know, and someone of that stature is still only using a little mic because that's all he needs, but people keep coming back because he's putting out good quality content, and he's a genuine guy. And I think that people need to stop having a certain uh, expectation for smaller channels. You know, it's hard for small channels to really get into the groove of what they're trying to figure out to do until they start getting more fans and more feedback. And I think people should be a little more lenient 
with subscriptions and comments and likes or dislikes. Or like I, when I started my tech channel, I would go around to other tech channels and evaluate them because I have, you know, I have the knowledge of how to run a, uh, all the audio engineering. So I'm just running because I don't want to die. Um, you know, so I would look at other tech channels and be like, Oh, well, his videos look really good, but his audio sounds poorly. Well, let me see if I can suggest something like, Hey dude, do you know how to do any EQ mixing? No. Okay. Well, here's what you can do if you use this audio software or why don't you like, um, I gaming guy, uh, 20, 24, I think is his name. I don't, he's one of my YouTube subscriptions. He's got like 12,000 subs, you know, and I commented on him and he's for someone who has that many subscriptions, you would think he would have a higher quality audio, but he's sitting there and he doesn't have a pop filter on his microphone. So you hear like every like, like that. And I have a pop filter on. So that already got crushed a lot more than if I move this thing. And I'm not going to, cause I don't want to hurt any microphone, any headphone users rather than microphone users. Yeah. Any headphone users, you know? And I was like, Hey dude, maybe you should think about getting a pop filter for your microphone. Since you, you know, you're getting a pretty good fan base. It might not be. And like coming from someone who only has 30 subs on that tech channel, but you can see that my videos are quality. It's just people just don't subscribe for whatever unforeseen reason, you know? And I, I think that people should just be more willing and more open to watching videos and, um, giving their support and their feedback. And I'm not telling anybody to subscribe or yeah, <sighs> I'm not telling anybody to comment on this video or anything. You know, like I said, if you guys b agree with me, you're going to say something. Or if you disagree with me, you're going to be like, no, I think you're wrong. And you know, I'm not trying to sound pretentious when I say any of this. I'm, I like having conversations with people and having meaningful, meaningful things and building that relationship with other people like K games or, uh, chaotic HD or, you know, a, a, uh, anybody that like a lot of the YouTubers that have already come over and are now fans of our channel. I think that's awesome. This nighttime is lasting for fucking ever and I can't see anything. And, um, I'm in the desert and I can't, I can't even find a damn tree. This is terrible. I had three, I had three of my wool. I could have made a bed, could have made a bed and made my spawn point, but no, I just couldn't fucking get there fast enough. And, oh, fuck. I'm serious. Damn it, he's gonna hit me. Oh, dodged him. You know, and... I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a little overcritical of everything, but... It's frustrating to see a lot of channels not continue with it because they're not getting the feedback that they wanted right away. You gotta stick with it. You know, we've been with it for... I started this channel t almost two years ago now. And we're almost at 500 subscribers. Meanwhile, there are other channels like uh, PewDiePie just shouted out to one of his quote unquote biggest hater channels. The kid got over 130,000 subscribers in one day because PewDiePie told them to go subscribe to him. And, you know, his videos, he's recording from, I think, like an iPod. Oh, damn it. Why? That's my bad. Like from an iPod Touch or something, you know iPod touch or is he's recording from something that's not the highest quality. He, and he doesn't speak the Eng English, you know, he doesn't speak the English language the best. Um, that's ironic that I just said it that way. Um, he doesn't speak English the best and, uh, he's Turkish, which is fine. You know, it's not his primary language, which is totally understandable, but the fan base is letting him know that, you know, and after he got all those subscribers, the first video that he put up is I'm Turkish. And he, you can see that like he's using windows movie maker, and uh, it's all captions. There's no actual... Look at all these cows. This is like food food haven right here. And um, he, you know, he's putting out all these captions. And uh, it's just moving pictures like a slideshow. Just saying, I'm Turkish with a smiley face. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not really telling him anything about his channel. And he's like, should I start gaming? Was, whoa. Hey, buddy. Thanks, I, I guess, for the easy would giggity uh um you know and people are going to keep going back but the problem is that if he doesn't create a quality video within the next couple uploads he's going to lose the majority of that fan base he might keep the number but that doesn't mean anything because the quality of his video was not good enough to keep the interest of that fan base and i'll be the first to admit that the pewdiepie fan base is like one of the most dedicated fan bases out there and it's, it's amazing how, how dedicated they are to watching his videos and making sure they give him feedback because he, fucking spiders, 
Stop the spiders. I hate them. I hate them. They're so fucking stupid. Especially with this stupid ass update. I hate the battle update. Oh, God. And PewDiePie himself says that, like, he focuses solely on the comments of people uh, in his comment section to make sure that he's making quality. And people let him know if there was a good video or not. And for them, he generates, I think, like, 2 million views a video every video he uploads, at least. And the majority of it's pretty positive. You know, there are those people that trickle in that are pretty downtrodden, I guess. But, you know, I don't think that he really lets them lets him phase that unless the majority of the fan base is saying, like, oh, well, uh, you know, you really kind of fucked up here, guy. And you uh, should probably fix that or don't do this next time sort of thing. And, you know, I feel like that's a lot. That's, that's the support that YouTubers today need like you like small channels need that kind of support and they shouldn't be babied i think it's really important that you know a channel that only has 20 subscribers be like hey man if you can afford this get a better capture card or get a better microphone or something that is real like i watched of like a uh, somebody followed us on twitter and i watched his video and it had like 36 views he had no subscribers no likes comments anything like that and what i come to f what i found out was that he had a horrible microphone when he started talking and that killed it his intro was great and everything but that just killed it once what's up rob coming in fucking ruining my video sorry what what's up oh uh, it's good no it's fine In interrupt everything it's good sorry. great I have to great <laughs> Run the intro again. fuck <laughs> anyway <laughs> as i was saying now that I don't remember, oh, yeah, that's small YouTube channels, yeah, yeah, you're gonna go now, okay, okay. Okay, all right, just give me like 10 minutes. All right. Um, Bye, guys. <laughs> such a bastard. <laughs> I'm leaving that in there. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> damn, you got me all flustered now, I can't think. So now I'm self-conscious. I'm thinking about it. Um, you know, if someone like that, if someone's like, wow, you really shouldn't have let him mess up your video. But like, I think that's part of the fun of our channel is that we let it, we're just, we're, we try to be laid back about a lot of things. And I think it's good for small channels to get not necessarily harsh criticism, but constructive criticism that tells them how to improve their channel in a way that will not discourage them, but be like, Hey, I think you need to do this. Like, Personally, I need to get better at my advertising on social media. I don't know what I'm doing wrong yet. I still haven't figured it out, but you know, we got channels like, uh, like cocktails and consoles. Melissa, she's got 1200 followers on Twitter and she's got like 230 or 260 subscribers right now. I don't, I don't, I don't remember. Anyway, meanwhile, we have 120 followers and you know, I'm tweeting at people. I'm like, hey, you know, like, hey, I loved your video. Check that out. You know, like, I don't try to tell them what they did wrong or anything because then you come off as an asshole. If the first thing you said is, hey, good video, but, you know, you got to there's you got to find that nice balance between not sounding like a pretentious dick and giving them bullshit information like this is the best video I've ever seen. And then if you tell them something like that, they're like, oh, well, I'll just keep making it this way. And it's like, no, that's no. It's, like, I'm just aimlessly walking around right now because I'm too busy focused on talking rather than actually progressing myself. But that's that's for another day. You shut you shut up. You shut up. I'm not talking to you. OK, I'm not. You see me? Yeah, that's right. Turn around with your little corkscrew tail right there. Anyway, guys, you know, it's it's just, I feel like people should not be so focused on the number and more so focused on the, um, more so focused on the, uh, the content, the quality of content that they create. And I know this is a long rant. I don't even, I lost track of how long I've been doing this. I'm probably like 30 minutes in at this point. I don't know. Um, you know, I hope you enjoyed this is just my two cents on it. This I, I feel like the Minecraft series has really become my kind of like my let my personal thoughts out kind of thing. And oh, I will briefly touch on this because I, I, I'm I glad I remembered it. Um, I've been seeing more in my recommended feed from big YouTubers like H3H3 and Leafy and like 
things about quote unquote YouTube drama. And I don't know what the hell all that's about, but I briefly watched one video from somebody and it said something about people getting egotistical and arrogant. And like the fact that I'm even seeing something called YouTube drama literally makes me feel like I'm back in high school again. YouTube is supposed to be a place where the community comes together and we help each other out to be, to make better videos and make better content, you know? And not everybody's gonna make it big, and I understand that. We may never even take off, which I'm perfectly okay with because I'm not, I'm not so much worried about the taking off aspect of it, of it rather than I am the actual, if I made someone's day better, if I made someone laugh, if I, if they're having a rough day, you know, and, one laugh is all I got them to do, but it made them just feel so much better about something. That's all I've ever wanted, you know? And um, the fact that you've heard YouTube drama through someone's egotistical self-centeredness or mindset or, like, I'm better than you because I'm a big YouTuber, like, no. Like, as far as I can tell, even PewDiePie, the biggest YouTuber right now, is a pretty down-to-earth kind of guy. And it's, it just, I think it speaks a lot about someone's character when you're like, you know, you forget that the fan base is literally what makes you big. Like, if you didn't have the fans, you would literally be no one, and you can be dumped in the blink of an eye. Think about um, the uh, bros, those bros that, um, React bros, that's it, the, the React bros. When they trademarked all of their stuff, and they're like, oh yeah, um, if you want to use any of our stuff, you just got to pay your our fee. And then you can make anything and use our content. And I get it. It was like, it's like saying, you know, Ford trademarked the Mustang or the Mustang GTR or the uh, GTR, wow, KR500, Mustang GT or the KR500. And it's like, okay, well, I want to make a video selling this product, you know, and that's perfectly fine. They did it the right way, but the way that it was presented, and especially on such a free platform, you, the backlash from their fan base was horrendous they I, they lost millions of subscribers in the first couple of days it was and like they realized what had happened and how poorly they did this and it just completely backfired and it was it was game over and it's something like that that people need to keep in mind when it comes to a quote unquote youtube drama like that it's that's asinine to me to even think that a platform like this creates people so pretentious that they think that they are like that they forget that this is a privilege and not a right and that they're entitled because you're not entitled to anything. You're, you're not. You are entitled to breathing, eating, and sleeping. And that's literally about the extent of it. And someone could revoke those privileges if you so desire and if you make them mad enough. You know, it, it, you know I just I feel like, you know, people need to stay humble and remember where they came from because you think about, okay, uh, Say we took off tomorrow, made some weird ass viral video that got us four million subs in a day. Um, you know, and then the day after that, you know, uh, my account gets hacked or my house burns down and I lose everything. Now I'm back at start like I'm back at square one, and at, like, you know, I have to remember that who I am, regardless of that number or the money or anything like that, and I feel like people shouldn't do YouTube solely for the money. They should do it because they love it and that they love making people feel better. That's why everybody loves Dan and Aaron because Dan and Aaron are such genuine people and they love making people feel good. And I think that I'm going to end it on that note. I'm going to make myself a shit ton of wood. And I don't know. I think people just need to stay humble and they need to be, realis re be realistic about... Um, about something like this because YouTube may not be around forever you know eventually they're gonna change their algorithm again where you know it used to be pay ba uh, view based now it's minutes per watch based when you get paid and eventually this entire platform may come crumbling down to where it doesn't pay anybody I can't imagine it because YouTube is a cash cow for Google but nevertheless thanks for sticking around for me to rant for the last I fucking I don't know probably 40 minutes now I'll look at the timer and then uh that'll be that and um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.